Hi guys, this is Niels and uh, welcome to another addendum. This is the third part for my 2024 addendum to my Logic series. And in this episode, I'm going to talk specifically about the Camper Amp, how you control the Camper from Logic. Uh, Logic can while playing back tracks, you can also control your settings on your amp. Same applies to other MIDI gear like keywords, of course. Same, but I'm going to specifically talk about the Camper because that's what I'm using as a guitar player. While I was working on this video, I noticed Kemper had come up with an update called 11.1 .1, and um, it's just beautiful. It opens, makes things easier, opens up a whole nother array of possibilities. So I decided to add a Kemper track in my Logic Downloads template. Uh, it looks like this uh, on the Kemper track. I basically um, added some presets for you to use for copy and paste purposes for rig changes, uh, uh, turning certain effects on and off, changing uh, the most used effect parameters and uh, you know the amp gain and you can all put this automation into Camper by just copying and pasting these modules. More about that later. First of all let's get started with some basics. So the first thing we need to do, we need to make the camper talk to the computer. That's done by plugging in the USB cable. But first let me bring up the audio MIDI setup on my Mac um, that you find that in utilities. And uh, you look at the MIDI studio window, you see all the devices that are hooked up. Now when I plug in the camper, you're gonna see that show up put a USB cord in there and there is the profiler right there right down there so once I have that I will have this available in logic as well I've already done this for you we can just create a new track and then select MIDI outputs profiler which is that camper meaning this track will talk to the camper I also set the camper to MIDI channel 16 you could also leave that on all channels so you don't have to worry about it because you're on a separate output but if you want to control different things uh, you could just uh, you know restrict yourself to one MIDI channel and then the camper gets controlled by either program changes or control changes what I did in this little section right here I added on this camper track it's just an empty track and I used the event editor to add a first I add a program change. If I want to change, I'll show you how this works. You just press the plus here. And then um, channel number, as I said, I have everything on channel 16. The value is 27 corresponds with my 27th rig in, the, in, the, in my camper. So I could do any kind of, you know, I named a few of them. You can see I can go to any kind of rig and have it switched. Uh, have a, a logic switch with this command the camper to that rig. Um, in addition, I'm going to throw this away. In addition, I also want to turn on a delay right here. Uh, that's kind of like a you know pretty long throw delay that I have turned on. That is done with a control change. So instead of program change, you change controller. Um, that specific delay is um, on uh, is number 27, the number 27, and then uh, it's either on or off. So it doesn't really matter what the number, but it other than zero turns it on, and then zero turns it off. So it could be six. That that number doesn't matter as long as it's not zero. We'll turn delay 27th, which is the 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 last delay in my delay chain here on the camper preamp and you can find all these assignments in the camper manual. So let me demonstrate what this is like. I'm going to switch from the clean tone to more overdriven sound and then at the end of the solo I'm going to add a delay and then after that when it goes back to a verse it switches back to a clean sound. So it will be something like this. So you're going to see the sounds change. This is the lead sound right here. Now we're going to switch over. To the, uh, a little more 
edgy sound. So as I told you, Camper came up with uh, a new update, version 11 or 11.1 .1, with extended MIDI parameters and implementation. And I was diving into that a little bit and, uh, you know, it's beautiful. I can now control delay parameters or effect parameters like the, the feedback and delay mix and have it controlled by logic. Uh, you see over here, uh, delay mix would be controller 68. You add a controller by again here, go to controller instead of a program change, it will be a controller. And then you can give it value. And you see over here, the mix level of the delay changes to my settings. The same with the feedback. See that? All right. So I can really program some crazy effect settings. And the most exciting feature I found is that logic can uh, send a tempo sync to the camper to make all the uh, tempo based effects like the delay be in sync with the song. It can send out a MIDI time clock. So the way to do that is in Logic you would go right over here to the settings and scroll down to MIDI, click on MIDI sync project settings and here as a destination you add that profiler or that whatever your camper is hooked up on as an output and check that clock. Now my delay, right now I see a quarter note delay here, is in sync with the song no matter what the tempo is. So check this out if I go here. Now let me go to a slower song you see the difference. Okay, right in sync with it. Different tempo. Absolutely beautiful. I love it. There's another nice feature I found, especially if you use the little player, the camper player, which becomes more and more powerful by the minute with the new updates available. But anyways, um, I really like to have my rig names show up here so I can just select them right here from Logic and I'll show you how to do this right now. So if you open up your rig manager, uh, it's also available free download, of course, from the Kemper website. And you see here are all the rigs I have from my uh, Kemper player, as yes, they are appearing, all 50 of them. So what I do here is I export tags to CSV file. Just put that on my desktop for now. That's the CSV file that we just created. And then in Logic, I will import them into a MIDI instrument so the names become available. I'm going to show you this from a blank Logic session so you can see how to create this camper track from scratch anyways. Let me close this guy here and go to a blank Logic session. I'm creating a new external MIDI track. All right. So right now there's really nothing there. I need to create that camper instrument. This is all done in the environment. Um, don't worry, I will hold your hand to get you there that's hidden right now, but you hold down Command-0, that's a secret keystroke that will bring up the environment window, and they have different layers. We want to go to, well, it doesn't really matter, clicks and ports is what I usually use, or if you have a MIDI instrument layer, I would use that. Either way, you can create a new multi-instrument, so that's what we want to do. And then multi-instruments, now we're going to uh, rename to Camper Player. I want to select my MIDI channel for it, 16. And then if I control click on the name and go to Open Object Man Editor, I get this window. 
Now let's go back to my list here. I select all these names, copy, and over here under options, paste all names, and voila, all the names are in here. Now I can reassign this track. Uh, it was in Clicks Imports, the Camper Player, channel 16. And there it is. Now all my names come up right here. And the other nice thing is I have a volume control for my camper. This will actually control the volume, output volume of my camper. So that's just fantastic. So let me go back to the enhanced uh, preset template and show you what it looks like in there when we hook up the camper. The first few uh, um, presets are just rig changing and you see here it changed from rig 1 to rig 2 to rig 3, rig 4 and rig 5 on both. Works from the little one and the big one. Next one are effect modules. On off you see module 1 go on and off, B module on off, C module on and off. Uh, and the D module on and off. Uh, then we're going to go on to after the uh, amp stage. And the last ones I show you because it also works on the little one. Uh, the reverb there is already on. But uh, you can see when it turns off. So both of them react to that. Uh, the little camper had just gotten an upgrade that you have eight uh, effect modules. Um, I have not gotten it, so I couldn't demonstrate it right there with it. I only had the two after the uh, M stage, and so you saw how, but it works the same way. So the beautiful thing is, once you set this up, no matter which um, camper unit you have, it will work. So the next section of these building blocks, so to speak, uh, deal with continuous controllers. I picked a few that I found most useful, uh, which would be delay mix, delay feedback, the same with reverb and the uh, amp gain. So delay mix is controller 68 as you can see right here in the manual. Uh, I inserted a few points and uh, I can even graphically edit this in logic uh, by changing this parameter right here. If you play this back you will see the delay mix part. Oops, got to go over to the delay of course. So you can observe this. The mix part should change with the fader and you see it moving up. I can even drag it to a different position right here. And you see how it, how it reacts to my setting. The same is, uh, works for the feedback control. Right. And then in the reverb unit, which would be Reverb is reverb mix is 70. The names don't correspond, right? This is a, a normal, uh, what is a continuous controller st standard MIDI. Um, so, but you just got to look at, at the number. 70 will be uh, the corresponding one for the reverb mix, and you see it's working. The same then for the decay time, the length of the reverb. And then finally, Let's get uh, in our amp, uh, important one here, the gain for the amplifier. I got that right here. And as you can see, uh, that too reacts to the points I've put in. Uh, that would be 72 here. So if you want to edit it, you need to just to make the right channel active in that region. And then you can draw in the curve of your M change depending on where you are in the song. I mean, you can go crazy with this stuff. Uh, but I figured uh, this way you can have a few starting points. You can copy and paste these, put them where you want them in the song. With the rigs, you can change the number. Of course, I just put five in there, but you can uh, just change the number, right? Uh, uh, the rig number, and we see that would be here. Rig zero, the, the number one number of the zero rig is the first rig, number one is rig two, and so forth. Uh, so if you need a rig ten, then you just can go up to uh, number nine. Um, 
and the, uh, put this together anywhere like you don't have to touch the pedal at all you don't have to tap dance it will do all that for you uh, it, it's just great having that, all that control I hope that gives you some ideas how to use it I hope that gives you you know a little bit inspiration how to get creative with this stuff check it out uh, as I said it's uh, available at the enhanced download package uh, I might even throw in a couple camper sounds for the camper people some of uh, my profiled Bogner sounds yeah and I have a couple more videos here I'm going to do some about OBS that's the streaming software I use to record my uh, show my Facebook live show and how that gets controlled by Logic so until then Neil's out peace Thank you.